We will now look at an example for an ideal spin system in an external magnetic field. Consider an ideal spin system placed in an external magnetic field such that the probability P of having an up moment mu0 zero is 0 0.51 and the probability Q of having a down moment minus mu0 zero is 0 0.49 and capital N is the number of spins. Find the average moment per spin, find the mean value of the total magnetic moment, find the standard deviation of the total magnetic moment, find the relative magnitude of the fluctuations and evaluate your answer for n equals 100 and n equals 10 to the power 24. And what is the conclusion from this calculation? Okay, let's start with the average moment per spin. Now, uh, if you recall, we can have for the ith spin a possibility of having a value uh, plus mu zero with probability p and minus mu zero with probability q. And uh, the average value of the moment for the ith spin is going to be the same for all mom all the spins because uh, this is an ideal spin system. Um, the average value is the same for all of the all of the moments in the system. So this is going to be equal to uh, the possible values of mu. Uh, the first possible value is mu zero with probability p, and the second possible value is minus mu zero with probability q so it is mu zero times p minus q so that's the average uh, moment per uh, spin so i can evaluate this uh, this is going to be equal to um, mu zero times 0 0.51 minus 0 0.49 because I can see that P is 0 0.51 and Q is 0 0.49. So let me write this here. And therefore, I find that the average uh, moment per spin is 0 0.02 times uh, mu zero. Uh, okay, so let's move on to part B of the problem. Part B asks me the mean value of the total magnetic moment. Now I recall that the mean magnetic value of the total magnetic moment, first of all, total magnetic moment is the sum over all spins, individual magnetic moments, and I have found in my uh, previous uh, discussion that the average total magnetic moment is capital N, the number of spins in the system, times the average moment uh, per spin. So therefore, uh, I will have the total magnetic moment uh, mean value to be equal to 0 0.02 capital N mu zero if I substitute what I have found for mu bar in part A to this expression. Let's move on to part C of the problem. Uh, find the standard deviation of the total magnetic moment delta mu delta M. Uh, so this standard deviation I have found to be related to uh, the standard deviation of mu with a factor square root n. So square root n times standard deviation of mu. So what is the standard deviation of mu? It is uh, delta mu square bar, the variance of mu, to the power one half and so let me find the variance of mu here 
uh, it is um, delta mu square bar the possible uh, values of mu uh, it's going to be um, mu 0 minus the average value mu 0 p minus q squared uh, multiplied by its probability probability that mu is equal to mu 0 that's p and then I would have uh, minus mu 0 minus mu 0 p minus q the average value squared multiplied by its probability q so this is going to give me mu 0 square um, 1 minus p plus q squared p plus mu 0 squared uh, 1 plus p minus q squared q so that means I would have um, mu 0 squared if you substitute for 1 p plus q so this is p plus q I would get uh, p is cancelling and 4 q squared p and here I will have uh, p, 1 is p plus q mu 0 squared 4 p squared q so therefore for the variance of mu I would find uh, 4 mu 0 squared p q parentheses p plus q which is 1 so it is simply 4 mu 0 squared p q and therefore uh, for the standard deviation of mu I would have 2 mu 0 square root p q so this is telling me that the standard deviation of m is 2 mu 0 square root n p q because of um, this result substituted here uh, so I have uh, for the standard deviation of the total magnetic moment uh, 2 square root n uh, 0 0.51 0 0.49 uh, multiplied with uh, mu 0 but uh, 0 0.51 and 0 0.49 are very close to 2 so I can say approximately this is 2 square root n over 4 mu 0 so roughly the standard deviation of m is going to be uh, square root n times mu 0 So that's the answer to part C. Uh, part D, find the relative magnitude of the fluctuations. Okay, so uh, let's think about the relative magnitude of the fluctuations. Uh, the relative magnitude of the fluctuations are given by the ratio of the standard deviation to the average value. So this is going to be uh, square root n times uh, mu 0 that's the standard deviation divided by the average value which I have found to be 0.02 n mu 0 so this would be equal to uh, 50 divided by square root n so that's the answer for this part 50 divided by square root n and now I'm going to evaluate this uh, relative magnitude of fluctuations uh, in part E for different n values. For n is equal to 100, uh, I would have a relative magnitude of fluctuations uh, 50 divided by square root 100, that is 5. And if n is equal to 10 to the power 24, 
then I would have the relative mag uh, fluctuations uh, is going to be equal to uh, 50 divided by square root to the power uh, square root 10 to the power 24 that's 10 to 12 so that is 5 times 10 to minus 11 so the conclusion is that uh, if n is very large of the order of Avogadro's number then we have the standard deviation in the total magnetic moment much 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 less than m bar uh, so m m will be uh, very close to its average value m bar for large uh, n so this would be the conclusion okay let's summarize what we did here uh, we have an ideal spin system consisting of capital N spins it's in an external magnetic field so that a probability of having an up moment plus mu zero is 0 0.51 and probability Q of having a down moment is minus mu zero we found the average moment per spin by multiplying uh, for each spin the possible values of uh, mu that is plus mu zero or minus mu zero multiplied by their probabilities uh, p mu zero plus minus mu zero q so it's mu zero p minus q substituted the probabilities to find 0 0.02 mu zero the total magnetic moment is the sum of all the magnetic moments if you take the average of both sides you find that the total magnetic moment average is the number of spins times mu bar so you just substitute the mu bar value we have found in part a to uh, n times mu bar to get 0.02 n mu zero for total magnetic moment for the standard deviation of the total magnetic moment the relationship we have shown uh, to be square root n times the standard deviation of mu in order to evaluate the standard deviation of mu we need to know the variance of mu uh, for that we substitute possible values of mu minus uh, the average value of mu so that's the deviation from the mean uh, squared multiplied by the corresponding probabilities so when I do that I find that the uh, the variance of mu is 4 mu zero square pq and standard deviation is 2 mu zero square square root pq and standard deviation of the total magnetic moment is uh, approximately square root n mu zero when we substitute uh, to 2 mu zero square root n p q p and q values because they are really really close to 1 over 2 one is 0 0.51 the other one is 0 0.49 and uh, finally we calculated the relative uh, magnitude of the fluctuations uh, standard deviation divided by the mean value that's 50 divided by square root n and when we evaluate the relative magnitude of the fluctuations the fluctuation amplitude is quite large for n equals 100 but it's very small for n is of the order of Avogadro's number so our conclusion is that the total magnetic moment will be very close to its average value for a large number of spins in this system.